So somebody in the Facebook group asked about the Ken Burns effect, and I'm not really a video person, but and that's why I put it in quotes in my title. But this, I've done these kinds of effects before where I'm using the camera and I'm also using um, the zoom. So I'm using camera, I'm using an animation right here of zoom as well as some rotation. And so I'll show you how I did this. It may or may not be the Ken Burns effect, but it will be my version of it that I can show you. So what I did is, and I, I've made a number of different versions and I kept changing it and I finally stopped at this one um, because you really can do a lot. You can make it whatever you want it to be. I did do a zoom out and then a zoom in. You don't have to do both at the same time, but I'm going to leave both of those in and I'll show you how to do both of those. If you want to do this with me, I did get this image in pixels. So you do have access to that. It's right here. You can see I was looking for one that had a boardwalk. I'm going to scroll up so you can see you do have to kind of scroll down a long ways. Um, as you can see, so keep scrolling and you will find that lighthouse. Um, I looked for a lot of different ones that I saved and then I ended up liking that one. So that's the one I used. So what I did here as we're zooming out is I used a position, scale and rotation animation and I did the same thing when I was zooming in. I guess I didn't use position, I just used scale and rotation. So let's do that. I already have this downloaded, so I'm just going to place that on my canvas. I am going to extend it so I have enough room. We can always make it shorter, but I'm just gonna put it on that way. And then what I'm gonna do is go to properties. And let me show you, just so you can see. If I go back to the beginning and my first keyframe, when I go to properties, you're going to see it has a 3D rotation here of 36. And then the end keyframe, it has the 3D rotation X of zero. So that's what we're gonna do here so that we can animate this to zoom. We're also going to um, use the camera. I did, this is the camera for my project. I had to put a camera here because I'm going to change the camera. And if I don't have that camera line there, it's going to screw up my former project. I won't go into why, but it's because the keyframes would be messed up. So I can move that out of the way right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the image. I'm going to go and do my 3D. And what did I have? It was like 30 or something. It doesn't have to be the same, but. And I also had it up a little bit. Then what I'm gonna do is add an animation. I had the position, scale, and rotation. I'm going to use linear. I'm gonna drag my keyframe for however long I want it. I can adjust it later by just, I can move them all, I can move this longer or shorter. But right now I'm just gonna set my keyframe and I am going to go to my properties and I'm going to put my 3D rotation for X on zero. And we'll see it pops down. Then I also had position because I wanted to use as much of the boardwalk as I could, so I moved it up at the same time. So here you can see it zooms. But of course it looks horrible because I've got the black of the canvas there, but that's where the camera comes in. The other thing is once you finish with your keyframes, you wanna make sure this keyframe goes to the start of the image. 
I found when it was even just this little bit of a pause, it, it made some of it look jerky and it didn't look quite good. So I want to make sure it's right to the edge. Then I'm going to put a camera animation. So I'm going to double click. So remember right here is our camera line. Right here you can see the little camera. And you get the camera effects and components. Go to your components and you're going to click and drag your camera to the canvas. I already have it on there, but so I'm going to double click and I do have some tutorials on the cam on the camera so I can link you to those. I also have a one minute one. Um, I'm going to drag out the camera bar. Here's where my keyframe ends. So I'm going to end it at the same time or just before it. I'm going to click on the bar, double two finger click on my mouse. And I'm just going to change the easing to linear. Now what I want it to do is before the keyframe, I am going to click and drag to make my camera smaller and just kind of place it in the middle there where the lighthouse is. And I already had it full. So when I go after, it's already going to go to full width. If it doesn't, all you have to do is push, click, expand camera. So let's see what happens. So now it's zooming out. And then what I did is I clicked on the keyframe that I had for the image. Make sure it's highlighted in blue. I added another animation linear for the easing. I don't need the position this time, but I do need the scale and the rotation. So right now, remember our rotation is at zero. Now I'm going to click my end keyframe and I want to make that go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to put it at minus 30. I'm just going to type it in. Okay. So now it's going to start to angle as if it's moving towards the, the um, lighthouse. But we've got this pesky black again. So that is why I have scale clicked as well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to scale this up. And I don't remember exactly what I had before, but I want to make sure that it's not going to show any of the black of the canvas. So it's covering the full canvas and I want it a little bit left for the boardwalk. So this looks good. It says, uh, it says it's at 100. So let's look at what this came out to be. Zooming out. And then in. Now when I did mine, I had it um, for some period of time right here. It didn't do anything and it stayed stationary and then it zoomed in. So you really can do anything you wanted. Um, I have little characters on there. I can show you what I did for that, but this is just a combination of camera, position, scale, and rotation, animation, custom animation. So it zooms out and then it's going to zoom in. What I did with the characters, I won't show you the shadow. I actually, we learned that from another creative creator um, and showed how to do the shadow. But as I'm talking and I'm trying to find my characters, what I did with the characters is I took Bella. I just rotated her. So she was, we have her at the back, click off on the rotate, 
make her smaller. I only had her a little bit. Whoop. I didn't mean to move her so far. I'm just going to leave her on idle. I had her doing, I think, dancing and then running. But I'm just going to leave her on idle here. So now, if we look, we can see her head. And I don't want her head to be seen that soon. And so for both Danny and Bella, I just added an animation of position, linear. I want her to be up here at the end keyframe and at the beginning keyframe, I just moved her down so she wouldn't be in the image in the video to start she would move her way up into whoop that was kind of fast there that's a little smoother and so then she was just there and then as we went in so i have this all positioned a little bit differently when i had her positioned before we don't see her in the bottom because I didn't want to deal with all of the movement. So let's see if that works. And then she just zooms in. I probably had her down a little bit. But that's how I did that. And then it looked like she was walking closer to the lighthouse by the zoom and the angle. So that's how I simulated the Ken Burns effect. And I hope it gave you some ideas. Again, just using, sorry, that was Bella, just using your position, scale, and rotation. Have fun.